Okay, so I'm told on this uh, on this case that police are going to have to eventually release the name, um, uh, and I'm told that is uh, and they they have to do it for civil action. So the family does would have the right to to sue, uh, and the MV 104A accident report has to be on file, and that is subject to FOIL. So. Uh, people could foil it. It would take some time, but the family will will be getting the name of the driver. Your question, though, is very interesting. We'll ask the chief about it. Is the did, did they didn't know the name? I, I feel <laughs> like I, I don't know. I, I, guess I will I'm tell you this: things. they're backtracking. Everybody that made the statements yesterday are backtracking very quickly right now, as they should. Um, and, a, and a vigil was held. It should have been held uh, for the child and just for the child. Instead. We're trying to create some racism here in Utica that doesn't exist. And and that's just terrible. And and oh by the way, the guy could have been the guy could have been a racist. He could have been. It doesn't mean he was trying to kill a child. Right? Right. I mean that that is not against the law if he if he had said things in his previous if that's true. If that's true. We don't even know if that's true. And, and what happens is this stuff gets on Facebook, and then people read it, and then they repeat it, and then it gets a little bit better because the person you're telling doesn't quite believe you. This is the to me, this is human nature. When you tell someone something, it's like I caught a fish, and a fish was huge, biggest fish I ever caught. And then you say, "Really? Yeah, I don't. I, I, I no, 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 no. It was a whale." It was a very large <laughs> whale. By the time you're done, it's a it's a whale of a tail, and and you know it's all fun and and games until you're dealing with 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 life and death here and with racism at a time when and I'm you know I understand there is racism everywhere, but we we don't have a racist problem in Utica right now, and and this has been completely created out of rumor and innuendo, and you're dealing with a child and a family. A child has lost his life, and sometimes when when families lose a, a someone or a child to an accident, sometimes they're not act, acting rationally. As anyone, think about how you'd feel. How would you react? I remember when this goes back to 1986 when my brother died, and I had someone come to me and say, "You know, uh, I can't even say what they said, uh, but it was." Yeah. What it what it did, and I rejected it because it, they they what it would have led to had I embraced this, it would have led to well we've got to sue somebody then this is terrible. I mean they're just saying that uh, you know people on the scene didn't do what was they were, didn't do what they were supposed to do. Uh, it was an accident, motorcycle accident. So um, we didn't uh, we just didn't bite. Uh, thankfully we didn't bite, um, but. That's how this, you're catching people at a very vulnerable time. Yeah. I mean, this is a family that just lost their child. I, I, and, and, you know, somebody comes up and, you know, that, uh, you know, I think he did that on purpose. And, and all of a sudden, this thing just gets rolling out of control. And I, you know, I, and I don't know that that's a fact. That's what I'm saying is factual. But I'm going to tell you this, that it's, it's possible. It's very possible that that's what's happening here. And then you get people on uh, tweeting and, and on Facebook, and this stuff just starts to spread. And now there's a vigil. The woman came on yesterday and told us that he, uh, that, that, as you said, backed over, backed over him on purpose. <laughs> twice. Um, twice. And then got out and started yelling more racial things. Um, th- we got to just grab a hold of uh, the situation here and take a deep breath and get things under control. Sue and Utica. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. I I just want to make a comment. I, I my heart goes out to the family. I I can't imagine their loss um, in such a horrific way, especially. And you know, people might have heard the sounds and everything that was going on. It's yeah. got to be terrible. Mm-hmm. And you know yourself. It's God forbid a squirrel walk runs into the road. You slow down, or right, if, right. Got, if or if you hit an animal, a dog, or whatnot. Yeah. But these people, they try to connect it. There are people out there that just want any excuse to create trouble and claim that everything is racist. Yeah. And and they're the ones that should learn to keep their mouths shut and not breathe. 
so judgmental. Everybody's so judgmental. It's oh, it's like a, they're it's, all perfect. Yeah. It's like we have our own, you know, we're watching what's on TV, and now we get to have our own drama happening oh. right here in this town. And there's, we're going to get out there, and we're going to activate, and we're going to get everybody together, and we're going to go out and, and protest. And, man, what are you doing? The exploitation well, of this exactly. family. Yeah. Utica's a nice little <clears throat> town to live in, and I'm sure the police are doing their yeah. utmost. This is what caught me yesterday, when she said that the police are covering this up Oh my God! Because the kid, so because the kid's black, and then even said they didn't. They uh, it was it, there was much more attention when the white child died a couple of weeks ago or a couple At of months Target, ago, right? Right. Yeah. Which was a different police force entirely, mm-hmm. by the way, and, and a completely different situation. Um, it's uh, that is just terrible and ridiculous to say. Um, I, I just. Uh, Sue, you're absolutely right. Manaski making the point. Well, just I, th- I, I feel so bad for this family for for ov- the obvious reason, but also if they're now being exploited by people trying to take advantage of this and use them yeah. for their political agenda. I, I mean, it's terrible. And I, since yeah. you mentioned the Target case, I don't remember the driver in that case being publicly. You know, no, we didn't have it on the not. air. It wasn't no, in we the don't. Paper. We don't do that because the people the. Usually, when the accident happens, um, it's horrific for the person involved. Yeah, um, and to put their name out there and make it all that much worse, um, we our policies, the news policy has always been they normally avoid unless there's something there. Right. I mean, it's right. it's <laughs> it's avoided. So, so you're right. Uh, but I'm I hate to bring this back, but this is shows the importance. And I know your politics here, but this shows the importance. How important it is that uh, that federal officials, people that have uh, are in the spotlight, and the president uh, really um, try to help mend the country and not say things that are inflammatory. No, exactly. He's yeah. he's part of the problem right there. You said, and Jeff said a lot there. I I totally agree. My my heart goes out to the family and also to the driver. I can't under I can't understand what he's going through. All right, uh, Sue. Thanks. We appreciate it. Yeah. Yep, thanks. All right, we'll stay with this. Uh, and uh, Chief Mark Williams, am I okay to go? Uh, Chief Mark Williams and Lieutenant Brian Coromato in here this morning. Gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. So it caught me when I had someone on the air saying that you guys are refusing because of the of the race of the child. You're refusing. You're, you're in the midst of a cover-up. Well, I know that uh, that is not true and could never be true. Um, we're pretty good in Utica. Uh, I, I think you have a very diverse police force. Um, we handle issues. For God's sakes, we have a, a, a mosque, in, a Muslim mosque in, in Utica, and it's without issue, without problems. We're a pretty inviting community here. In my concern, when the um, f- uh, previous night on uh, Tuesday night, uh, Brian Cormano made me aware of some social media comments that were made. Uh, we felt that we had to come out publicly yeah. Uh, to rebut a lot of that uh, information that was put out there that was patently false. Yeah, yeah. Um, so someone said, uh, you, you're going to be releasing a video, and you probably would never even do this, except you are post- put in a position where you kind of have to now, right? Well, you no. Know, and what's lot- that going to be like for the family to have to see the video? Exactly. Um, yesterday, I, I talked to uh, District Attorney Scott McNamara, as well as my own mayor and his staff, and... Uh, it was felt that based on the misinformation that was put out there, that it'd be best to put out some of the truth now of a video that does not show graphically what happened, but can show the actions of the driver. Yeah, okay. And um, and late yesterday, uh, I received a phone call from the mayor who was at the Candlelight Vigil last night, and the family was asking that the video not be released to the news media. So uh, the one copy that I had submitted to the news media, I called that entity up, okay. asked them not to uh, air it, and they didn't. Okay, nice. Um, Good. Yeah. So if the, if the family sees it, and they will see it, is that true? We've invited the family to okay. come view it before we uh, wanted to release it to the news media, and they declined. They have declined. Yes. I don't blame them. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, would you want to see that? No. So, but they accept your um, they they accept your conclusion on this case that this man. So, what is your conclusion? This man is. Uh, uh, was he racist? Is this man shouting things out like people are saying? Did he back over the child twice and get out and start yelling at the kid? We don't have any evidence to support any of that. Okay. Um, 
at, at this point, the case is still like being investigated. I mean, right, there's, right. Uh, today we have the state police coming to do a, a skid test on the car, and, mm-hmm. and, and there's other mechanical things that have to be done that just take time. Sure, you know we kind of we kind of get it from both ends where you know it's it seems like we're not doing enough, but but we are. Right, it just takes right. some time. Then we're, then we're also saying, well, you're taking you're being too quick with the investigation. So we we get our criticism and mm-hmm. we accept it. That's just part of our job. Yeah. Um, but I think in this situation with the the tragic event that it is. Uh, we had to come out a little bit earlier and yeah, kind of say yeah. some things, in, you know, along with uh, District Attorney Matt. Like uh, maybe everybody's got to take a very, very deep breath here and relax. Well, um, one thing, one thing I want to um, get out there is that I did receive a call from one of the organizers yesterday, and she was very uh, open to listen to me talk. We had about a half hour conversation. I explained everything that I can explain to her, and um, you know, she was very open and willing to listen to me and she wanted to get the message across because i think you know i think they felt maybe they, they didn't have the other side of the of, right, of, right of the story so um i have to appreciate that and well you know. welcome to the world of, of social media that's <laughs> what's going that's what happens and now you have everybody coming out uh, there are many people involved uh, in the social media yesterday that are backtracking very quickly now because they're finding that the information that they had wasn't so true and really it seems like someone took the national story of racism and tried to uh, apply it to uh, to utica and it's had a very negative effect um so no evidence have you have you interviewed the um uh, the the driver which i'm assuming you have yeah he he was he was interviewed uh I, the incident took place there were several calls to 911 which he is one of the calls to 911 his call lasts to 911 for about Two and a half minutes, so just a little bit less than two and a half minutes. Cops are on scene, you know, w- with the, just about that time with less than three minutes. Yeah. Uh, you know, UFD shows up shortly after that. Uh, you know, an officer actually carries the kid to um, the ambulance to get him help as quick as possible. And uh, he, he, from there, he was brought to the police station right from the scene. Yeah. And, he, you know, he obviously faced a battery of tests, you know, for alcohol, for drugs, which he didn't have any signs of either mm-hmm. uh and then he was interviewed by an investigator and a statement was re- taken from him based on that statement did you feel remorse uh you, you know from did from what see, i from, see... from, from what i'm getting from my investigators that you know he's having a hard time with this yeah. uh you know I, i'm not sure that he maybe he knows how to express that because of the sentiment that's going on right mm-hmm. now that, that's just my own personal opinion but um you know i have listened to some voicemails that he's left and you, you could tell that he is not uh handling this all that well now ultimately you're going to have to release his name right uh yeah by law you'll have to release the name but right now you're not releasing the name right we, we won't release anything you know anything until the end of the investigation okay. uh i have someone asking this question remember you are well five white men in a room passing judgment how about some voices from people of color um can we talk about that chief and i'll, sure. I'll address that to you um how uh, you're 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 white. How about a uh, he said goes on a black police officer would be great. Uh, talk about that. I would like to think that if I can't be objective in my job, that I should step down. Um, I have to be objective, and I probably work in one of the most diverse communities yeah. in this county. So, um, if my if I had prejudice out there, I, if I was uh, couldn't be objective, it would have been exploited by now. I've been a yeah. chief now for seven and a half years, and uh, and putting the emotions off to the side. We have to look at this unfortunate incident, you know, for what it is. Yeah, yeah. And from a practical sense, so. In, 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 to talk on that, one of uh, our investigators who um, is African American is working on this case, uh, so he has been in touch with the family. He has talked to the family. He has talked to the to the driver. He's been intimately involved in this case, and you know, he if he was here right now, he would be saying the same thing. Uh, and ultimately, we all want to be in a place where it doesn't matter what color a person is. Yeah, we, absolutely. We trust people and we judge people based on who they are and what they've done, not on the color of their skin. But look at the world today. It's uh, it's scary right now. Nationally, very scary. It is. And, you know, one of the things that uh, was very concerning when we heard some of the uh, remarks on social media was comparing this incident to Charlottesville. Right. We are not Charlottesville. And... Uh, I listened to Jeff's uh, comment just prior to us coming in here, and uh, what we felt uh, when a lot of the remarks were being put out there that uh, 
this was being exploited by other groups that wanted to take advantage mm-hmm. of potentially the family's uh, you know grievance that they're going uh, gr- the grieving process they're going through and uh, we didn't want the family exploited at the same time we didn't want our reputation damaged right took me all uh, the last couple of days to figure out how to get out of a, a group on Facebook uh, that once they get you in these groups you're in and you keep get the messages keep popping up some moron that uh, was doing just what you're talking about and I find it's options by the way you go to options and you can get out of it <laughs> thank uh, you Bill. it's just awful <laughs> thank you uh, it's popping up in the middle of the night and it's all this hate stuff and uh, that doesn't exist here we do pretty well in Utica I like think, to think we do yeah we're not perfect but I think we do pretty well. I agree. All right, gentlemen. Uh, so, full report, how long before you expect that? Uh, I don't know. Pro- yeah. Probably within the next couple of weeks, I would think. But you feel that at this point, um, the communication that you're having with the family um, is has been helpful, and the family is accepting of your uh, your your conclusions at this point? Is that true I, or no? I, I think we've, you know... Th- you know they're obviously grieving, and, and, sure. and obviously we respect that. And obviously, you know, there's some anger involved there, which is, I think, a normal human reaction. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Especially so at, if someone's at this point, getting in your getting in your head. Um, at this point, I think I think you know I think the first statement would be is that we're trying to give them as much information as we possibly can. It's the most accurate at that time, um, w- whether they agree with it or not. I assume the driver was white. Can you tell us? Yes. That? Yes. Okay. All right, we'll uh, we'll sit patiently, but it does. This is an example uh, of how things can swirl out of control very, very quickly.